Hey everyone, Sean here, and welcome back to another review for The Boys Season 4, specifically Episode 6. There are things to talk about, uh, more on the theory crafting than anything, but I do want to give my two cents on it real quick when it comes to the actual review of things. So let's get right into it. So Episode 6 definitely felt like more of The Boys, right? It's now feeling like it's getting back on track with... A number of these side stories starting to sort of wrap up on things. You kind of get the point. You know, even stuff is going on with Frenchie. Kind of, you know, like... It's, uh, I mean, it's still up in the air, sure, of where this is going to conclude. But uh, I do want to, speaking of Frenchie, add this note in. Is, and, uh, and that is the fact that I actually went back on watching Season 3, like... Not skimming, not even skimming through. Like I, I, you know, um, I put on the background, and then I, you know, t uh, turn, turn my head whenever Frenchie was on the screen, and there were like pretty much like no telltale signs of like, you know, Frenchie being where he is. Right? It just it, so Frenchie turning up or written to be like this kind of turned out, or it like kind of came out of nowhere. So. All the more weird about season four with Frenchie, I think they're doing him a, uh, a disservice in a way, especially with what how like things turned out for season three. It seemed like you know uh, hit him and Kimiko were like you know really falling um, falling in love for each other. Right, Think things are starting to like you know really um, build for one another, especially with when Kimiko got her powers back and. You know they they dance together in in the in that little room i believe you know and in the, in the whole thing with oh well maybe maybe uh it, it was like right before she got her powers back the dance happened right um one way or the other they danced right they did this little slow dance or whatever and then you know she commented about you know um frenchie's arms being like straws whenever she had her powers or some, something like that um and all that and all in between so, that whole thing, especially when Kimiko was like, oh, you know, we're not happening, you know, right, that was like in the beginning of season four, right, episode one, you know, she was like doing her, uh, she was like telling Frenchie, you know, you know, between us, it's not happening, right, out of nowhere, it's like, why, why that sudden, like, stop, you know what I mean, so, I guess they wanted to, like, create more drama, I guess, so they just... Um, for some reason stretched out this whole thing when they were already like starting to establish their relationship right it seems like so again it's all the more weird now now that I actually went back on season 3 to rewatch it to like see if any if there are like any signs of Frenchie and Kimiko kind of like having this weird thing and yeah like there's no there's like little little to no sign of that so that's why again season four is kind of like in an odd place especially during the early episodes in terms of like you know where characters are especially you know again dare i say frenchy so um er uh, but otherwise everyone else is all right you know butcher uh mm and huey and all that stuff um so yeah, really the problem does lie with Frenchie's side story. Uh, I just felt like they just stretched it out. Like they just brought in Colin out of nowhere. And like now, you know, out of nowhere, um, he started to feel bad, right? Like if, if, if he kept thinking about Nina and stuff like that, then that makes sense. But it's, it's so focused on Colin at the time it just felt weird like you know of all of all the the people right um and yeah basically like um you know goes out you know has a relationship with him and everything it's just so weird so i don't know what uh, i mean maybe maybe there is someone who can fill in on that but yeah um the whole Frenchie thing is, uh, yeah, unfortunately a miss, a misstep in anything. See, I thought, and I thought watching watching season three again will like clear things up for, for him, but it actually made things all the more weird for me. So that's really unfortunate that that's like the the ne big negative con, you know. But otherwise, uh, episode six um, definitely is moving forward. It seems like um, 
now funny enough that was the episode that was missing Frenchie because he turned himself in um, for reasons blah 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 right and um, now it's up to um, you know um, MM and the others to um, pretty much like get, try to get more info on them like uh, they were, they were um, trying to plant um, what do you call those? Oh yeah, bugs um, at the at the uh, little ho the party held by Tech Knight, and you know because uh, Tech Knight was gonna have a meeting with um, Homelander and Sage and all that stuff, and you know with a good chunk of the seven, right? And along with the uh, some of the members of the, the the you know the senators and stuff like that, the political people, right? The political figures were going were supposed to hear out. Uh, Homelander w with his pitch and everything um, of course that was like uh, a lot of it was built by Sage which uh, turns out to be a funny scene later on which I'll talk about in the spoiler section of things but basically like it it, it definitely feels more like the boys now um, with sort of the, these obstacles out of the way sort of thing or at least put on the side for right now because again Frenchie you know is in jail he put himself in jail. Reasons why I'll uh, I won't spoil that. But anyway, um, so yeah, uh, the it, it definitely yeah like I said it, it definitely felt like the boys. So of course it's gonna have like the graphic grossness to it. Um, definitely a little more on the com uncomfortable side of things. Uh, a little less on the violence um, this time around, but it definitely dries up the. The sexual graphic nature of it, uh, especially for Tech Knight, right? Um, as we all know, with Tech Knight established from not only in the show uh, Gen V, but also from the comics, that he's just so messed up in the head um, due to, I believe, a brain tumor of sorts or brain cancer or something like that. He, it, something bad happened with his brain that his. Um, sexual deviancy is like worse than before like apparently he was a sexual sexual deviant even with all the even before all the brain tumor stuff but the brain tumor um amplified that pretty much um at the end of it he's so you know he's still a sexual deviant <laughs> at the end of the day and it is pretty bad you know so um he and uh, Ashley actually ha uh, actually go back. Um, you know, they're, they've, they've been like old friends or whatever because they share similar interests in that sort of field. Um, and it does get pretty bad <laughs> with, with uh, later on. So um, it's more on that side of things. So obviously, if you're really not into that stuff, then that's really, you know, the nature of it for episode six. It was kind of funny at first, and then, you know, uh, it de definitely got more on the uncomfortable side of things, but it's still, like, you know, it's still entertaining, but obviously, if, you're just, if it's not for you, then, yeah, that's kind of uh, um, how it goes for episode 6. But, it does move the story forward with with what Homelander has in mind, uh, what goes on, what, what happens with Tech Knight, of course, why he... Um, he even got together with the seven in the first place um and there is some disappointment to be had because of what they did with tech knight um in the comics he's supposed to be more of an iron man parody than batman and then um here in this case here they made him more of a batman parody even though yes in the comics he's supposed to be a blend of both but i always found tech knight to be a, a parody of um Iron Man really because he had a suit and everything and I'm going to say this right now you're, you're, you're not going to see the suit for from uh, Tech Knight unfortunately so it, I mean it could be up in the air as to uh, where the suit goes if it does exist here because um, I believe he did wear it or they, they it, it was said he wore a suit of armor of sorts a high tech suit um back in the day or whatever before Gen V or his appearance for Gen V uh, so that's why you know it is all the more disappointing for me that we don't we don't get to see that so there are in and, and, and um, they, they made him more of a um, 
like I said, Batman. So even you know with the sidekick and all and all that stuff, and even he has a butler and stuff like that. So um, now obviously that is sort of like minor spoilers at most, but it is uh, a little more out of context. So you definitely have to see it for yourself as to how this all unfolds and stuff like that. But I can tell you that for right now, it is pretty gross, <laughs> you know. And uh, people like to kind of argue, like, oh, this was pretty bad, like, is this worse than the comics? But man, no, the comics is pretty, pretty bad. Like, it's really bad when it comes to the sexual nature of things. But that's just my opinion of it. I mean, if one would think so, then, that, then so be it. But I personally think um, it's a little more tame in the show than it is in the comics, obviously, because, you know what I mean? Like, when you show it, you know, like in the film or something with moving picture and stuff, obviously, it, it, it definitely enhances that, that experience, right? So that's why they kind of have to, like, hold it back a little bit. So by nature, by that nature, um, it is a little more tame in that sense. And in the comics, right, they just go all out right that's where it, that's where it comes from there's, there's no filter or anything like that um you know whether it's for the best or not right uh it's pretty it gets it gets more it gets um crazy you know that's one way to put it so um but i mean otherwise you know everything else was good the pacing and everything the sort of like the tension and stuff like that and then what happens between um mm and sister sage and everything and then like uh, uh and then uh for something that much n not much happens when it comes to like the actual action of things there definitely is a lot of theory crafting in this episode like as to where it goes like oh what's gonna happen and everything um which is why uh these weekly episodes is fun in that sense you can actually like have time to like craft theories and stuff like that um, in each uh, between each episode or each week, unlike you know um, some others where they just drop everything at once and then you just have to like uh, um, do one review or whatever. But you know they they both have their uh, pros and cons and everything. So I mean it really depends on the show. Like you know what should should one one show or should all shows be weekly or should more shows be uh, dropping everything at once and then just binge it and everything so i don't know it definitely depends on uh on the show to show basis right or case by case basis anyway so um back on to here um that's really all i have uh it definitely leaves uh more questions than anything there is a pretty good uh plot twist um not that it's a ridge or anything but it's it's still like pretty well done like oh whoa you know and stuff like that so uh i welcomed it and uh, definitely leaves more questions by the end of it. So, uh, if I were to give it a rating, because uh, even though it's a little trivial, um, I'll definitely give it like a like an eight. You know, it definitely does uh, emphasize more on the sexual side of the boys, which, uh, admittedly, like that's uh, um, second rate in comparison to the violent action I, I look forward to. But, you know, it's it, it's like, that's the boys, you know, so uh, I'm more of like the, the action side of things and all the, all the sexual things. But that definitely, you know, builds a lot of these, like, the, the at least the villains anyway, right? It definitely shows who they are and stuff like that, especially with Homelander and Ashley and like, um, and so there's other such characters. Not all the bad guys are, are like that, but, you know, you know, for those certain characters, yes. Especially with Tech Knight, Jesus Christ. But anyways, it's an 8 out of 10. It's a solid boys episode. This is more of uh, the boys the boys fans alley, right? Um, in that sense. Uh, so if, you know, you're kind of starting to grow tired of, like, the side plot kind of thing. And, like, the, so the, 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 the deviation of the boys, you know, um, you see less of that here. I mean, even though there is, yes, sexual deviation... It actually doesn't deviate the sort of usual expectations of the boys, right? When you expect an episode, this is it, kind of. <laughs> so, anyways, go ahead and watch it. I, uh, I do recommend it. You know, it definitely moves the story forward. Uh, but it will de definitely be um, a little uncomfortable. Let's just put it that way. 
So anyways, uh, I will like to go into spoilers now. Alright, spoiler time. Uh, so, uh, definitely more theory crafting than anything, of course. Uh, so, let's just start with, uh, what you gonna call, uh, the thing with Sage, right? So, so first off, Sister Sage and MM had the exchange, right? Um, he, or she brought up, um, MM's daughter, I believe, and she just kept taunting him and such like that in a way. But she kept up bringing, like, it's like she could, because she knows, uh, enough at least that MM has some sort of, OCD problem and then oh um, you know these symptoms are, are an early sign of the same thing uh, your daughter may have and stuff like that and then MM is like shut up you know like you know stop talking or whatever and then she just kept going and going and going and then she moves and then um, MM had no choice but to shoot her in the head that shot in her head of course though doesn't won't do uh, won't do her uh, fatally because of course her brain regenerates so um, she just has a bullet in, uh, bullet hole in her head but in turn um, it actually takes away her her brain power right until it regenerates you know because so, it obviously, obviously takes brain out so yeah right brain matter less of it therefore less intelligent and uh, she started to be like oh you know I can eat a whole like cake and then have some uh uh you know whatever like a sabir or something i forget what it was called but anyway um some sort of toy let's put it that way uh <laughs> so you know she kept saying these things and then homelander's like what what are you doing like you gotta present the the plan that you gotta pitch the plan to um to the senators and stuff like that um you know it's this is important obviously but um you know there come then comes the theory right like did she do that on purpose because she has uh definitely a reason to turn her back on the seven right because of um the racism that the uh, you know that that bot you know just uh expresses right with especially when you know um you're, you're dealing with like a train and stuff like that um you know racism uh does come up frequently kind of with uh those things so people like a train suffer it suffer for it and then sage kind of like kind of got a taste of it so um and, and other such things so Obviously, it's not just about the racism. I'm, I'm pretty sure there are other reasons for Sage to do this, but uh, if it is true, of course. But I think uh, Sage did this on purpose, right? Uh, to, you know, um, get MM to be angry, right? To shoot her in the head or whatever. Uh, I mean, she did, she took a gamble because she literally could have um, gotten shot in the heart or whatever in the chest, any anywhere but the head and. She could have died right there because she's just um, otherwise just a really smart human, or uh, in a sense. But her brain power comes from the the soup powers, right? So um, she is uh, quite vulnerable there. But um, and then we kind of took the bait in a sense and shot her in the head instead, so that um, she doesn't quite follow along with the plan on purpose because of like she wants to essentially turn her back on the seven she's like turn she's like um essentially almost like uh setting up um people like firecracker to do something stupid right she's already she already set her up to be to get her ass beat by um starlight and stuff like that so she kind of is a puppet in that sense but firecracker is like um aware of it she is aware of it so um even sage is kind of like treating her like shit like she's treating her like a child so like the disrespect is there, and um, I, I'm afraid that will be uh, to her detriment as well as um, Firecracker. You know, she'll probably have uh, Firecracker will probably have the last laugh, but not before dying. I, I'm 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 predicting. So, yeah. So um, but anyways, I think she got shot in the head on purpose just because of that. Like she wants to kind of like slow them down as much as possible. Um, and uh, and also it, it does it, it does help that fact because Sage helped 
A Train kind of get away with the leak, right? Because A Train leaked the information about the security stuff to um, Starlight, and Sage knows it at this point. It's obvious, uh, but she covered it up by having um, what was his name? Um, Cameron, I think his name is, um, that got his ass beat to death because um, she set him up to be the leaker. Like they, uh, they, they she made him to be uh, a decoy of sorts somehow in some way but she, she uh, essentially planted um mm's information on his phone instead somehow so obviously she does have something cooking in the back uh, in the background that's um against vought uh, i think she just hates vought you know for reasons that will definitely be revealed um later on obviously but I think definitely one of them is uh, the racism that they just um, had. Like the fact that, you know, uh, Vought was founded by a German scientist and such. And, um, and uh, that scientist, of course, even got together with um, Stormfront. And Stormfront, of course, is a, um, in the, like essentially an enforcer of Nazism. So obviously that does kind of, kind of come into play in a way. So, um, Sage, either way, has reasons uh, to do that, right? So, what happened was um, she was just, like, eating cake, like, with her hands. It gets all messy and everything. So, the Homelander had to, like, try to pitch it to um, the, the senators, right? When Tech Knight was missing, he, 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 even though he's the host, he's missing because he's doing his sexual deviancy in his uh, basement or whatever, his, uh, his dungeon if you will um so you know he, he homelander tried to um do it he tried to pitch it but they were like pointing out all the flaws and everything in his plans right when he explains it um because obviously when you're going to be the ruler right what's a kingdom or what 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 is a king without his kingdom right how are you going to rule when there's no people to rule right so that's why um, Homelander has to do this smartly rather than, you know, just killing everything, you know, like how you're, how you're supposed to actually run stuff when there's really little left. So that's like the basis of it anyway, of the flaws or, you know, the sort of counteract or counter argument to his to his uh, his plans. But then Newman, you know, comes in to the rescue, kind of. But she kind of has to do it because of Homelander. Um, <laughs> so she kind of uh, uh, dug him out of the hole, essentially. Helped dug him out of the hole. And I love the part where Newman was looking back on uh, Sage. And they're, like, like nodding at first. Like, like you know, it was, it was like, a, um, a, like a cool one. And then Sage kept doing it just because, like, you know, her, 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 cause her, her brain... So she just like kept, she like did like a wink or something or like an eyebrow raise or whatever and then Newman's like yeah okay yeah 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 we we got this I you know in a way and then she kept doing it like the third time and she, and then Newman just like uh okay <laughs> I thought that was really funny so um uh yeah so that's like I think a theory right there um uh that's been kind of floating around i think you know for sage that she's actually there to uh, overall she's actually there to foil vought rather than um help vought at, at the end but but she's still a bad guy because she's still doing it for her her own benefit um you know she's kind of like uh uh she's like she wants to cause chaos and uh, she is evil though while at it so she is I guess you could say chaotic evil, you know. Maybe chaotic neutral at best, but definitely um, evil of some kind. So I would say chaotic evil, chaotic evil for right now. So, um, I think that's uh, one of the big like theory crafting scenes, right? As to why that whole thing happened. Um, Cause yeah, like uh, that's like her weakness, right? Sage's weakness, you know. Uh, that if she gets, if she lobotomizes herself, or she gets shot in the head somehow, 
and then she you know there is a plan that needs to be carried out still crafted by sage she is incapable so like that's um one one of the flaws right she's so smart that um uh whenever she makes a plan right it has to go really well otherwise if she's if she is inca incapacitated it's, it it falls apart so instantly like almost instantly especially with um who who's supporting her right so homelander is not the smartest guy he's manipulative but he's still not the smartest guy which is why it was falling apart real fast because yeah the other people like you know uh, obviously firecracker is not competent enough um she's good with her words but she's not competent enough um newman is really the only other smart person right so that's why they got lucky in the first place when it comes to convincing people and such and um and then you know of course sage so um that's uh, essentially it on that part the other theory right was with uh, butcher and what's going on with himself so of course the big plot twist was that joe was not real um what happened what what happened in the beginning butcher this entire time was talking to himself it very it was uh, very reminiscent of uh, Black Ops um, storyline, you know, with uh, Mason and um, um, Reznov. So, like, you know, obviously, like, whenever Mason was talking to Reznov, um, <clears throat> he uh, was only talking to himself, and that's why all the people around him were like, "What? What? Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you talking to yourself? Like, you know, like, focus on the mission. Come on, man." When Mason thought when Mason thought um, Reznov was real, but uh, that was only because um, Reznov was able to sort of brainwash uh, Mason enough f to plant himself into uh, Mason's mind to um, exact revenge against, um, you know, the three men, right? Uh, Dra uh, Dragovich, uh, Kravchenko, and um, uh, Steiner. So, <laughs> I can't, you know... It, I uh, can't believe I still remember those names, but you know, it's like whenever you say that those things over and over and over again, it's like, uh, can you blame Mason for, you know, falling in, falling into that thing, that whole fra phase, you know? So anyway, um, very reminiscent of that. So I kind of actually like that. It was like kind of nostalgic in a sense. Um, I love how they did it too. It's like when Joe looked over to um, Be Be uh, Becky, because. Um, Butcher was doing that for, with Becky, though. Um, of course, Becky was in his... Uh, you, you know Becky is imaginary because she's already dead. We already know she's dead, unfortunately. Um, but when... It, but Joe was like, hmm, right? It's um, a little strange, right? In a sense. But you don't. we don't know about Joe enough. But here we are. You know, uh, Joe... Um, it ain't real he it, le it turns out that he was left for dead by butcher funny enough um i think it was somewhere like in the middle east or something at some point during a mission and he died he was left for dead unfortunately but you know he's around he's in uh butcher's head that uh could be powered by the sort of cancer in his mind Maybe it's just his consciousness being fucked with by the cancer. I don't know. Who knows? Because essentially, Joe and Becky are like the angel and devil on his shoulders. Um, you know, Be Becky, obviously, or Becca, um, is telling him to do the good stuff. Joe is telling him to do the bad stuff. Joe is, like, telling him to be himself, right? His old self. And then Becky or Becca is, like, um, essentially telling him that yeah like hey you have a heart like you're a good guy like be that good guy right you know this is who who you really are you know but um yeah so that's why like you know you see the the other scenes right previously uh butcher just pouring a drink on the table instead of joe's uh cup and then when he was interrogating um what uh interrogating what's his face um Samir or whatever his name is, the the scient the scientist, the doctor or whatever. Um he was just like, Wait, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? Like, why are you saying those things, right? 
So, um, and then, oh yeah, and then the, the bench, uh, scene, the lady running by, she's like, what the fuck, you know, like, <laughs> so, it was pretty funny to, like, sh kind of show what was actually happening, rather than, um, you know what I mean, uh, with Butcher. You kind of, kind of got a hint of that with, um, Frenchie and Kimiko when they, like, first walk up to him, when, you know, Butcher was, like, barfing out the, essentially the cancer, um, and then, you know, uh, Becky was like, you know, saying stuff to him. And then Butcher was like, I'm fine. Frenchie was like, who, you, who, like who, who the fuck are you talking to, right? You know? Um, so that, that was kind of kind of like a hint. It was obvious hint for Rebecca, but it, it was it was turning out to be um, also a hint for Joe in a way. Like, and, and, and it's like a, like a foreshadow in a sense. That's how I interpret it anyway with uh him and joe so um so yes it was uh pretty much butcher is talking to himself the entire time pretty much um i mean who knows it could be the can the cancer right amplified by 10v or whatever or, or 10v is like this like entity created by um uh, as a result of like trying to take the human cells and just like it like morphs and mutates into this life form within these people, right? That's why you see the rabbit, right? Um, that was injected with him V, and then the tentacles pop out, right? Um, and a butcher stomps the shit out of it, you know. Unfortunately for the rabbit, poor rabbit, obviously, but um, that's I think that's how it works, right? Like you know, Tim V was just like this freak concoction that not only gives superpowers but it does that by just like rip essentially taking the the the, the cells of life forms mutates it and then you know gives them powers but the more you take it of course the more um it builds be becoming uh this like entity this this thing inside of you and that's why it, eventually it'll explode with the tentacles and everything, right? And uh, and what's happening with Butcher, of course, is just like turning everything it consumes into that black goo that um, Butcher is vomiting out. And that's kind of also how, like, um, it, you know, was he was able to survive. Um, Ezekiel, I think his name was, the stretchy dude. Um, his encounter with that, like, he, you know, he woke, he like, he like was knocked out or something. He blacked out. And then when he opened his eyes, Ezekiel was like ripped apart and everything and that was all thanks to like the tentacles and everything so it's a little different with butcher i guess because he's human and the rabbit is wasn't a, wasn't lucky enough right um butcher you know i mean besides the writing right butcher survives is surviving a little longer with the temp v tentacle monster thing i'm gonna i'm just gonna call it inside him and um because though I think this is uh, the the different the difference here with Butcher is that because he injected um, more co actual compound V while having that cancer, he like essentially made it into a super mutant inside himself, and then the mutant is now like actually like sentient in a way more or even more sentient in a sense, and uh, and now is fucking with his head. Now he's like, essentially, or this thing is fucking with Butcher, just using things he knows, right? Hence why there's Becca, right? And then there is uh, Joe. He's just fucking with his head, somehow, some way. Um, or, or, or Becca is a symbol of Butcher fighting back, while Joe is the cancer telling Butcher to just be himself or whatever, just fucking with him, pretty much. Or, or it could just be all the cancer's fault altogether. I don't know um, on that part. But I think, though, yes, um, that is all caused by the Tem B monster thing inside of him. And, of course, thanks to the compound V he injected because um, he stole that from Frenchie's desk because Frenchie had a little, um, some compound V left after um, Kimiko asked for it from Starlight. Starlight brought it back to um, Kimiko because Starlight was still part of the Seven at the time. So yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of like chain of events, right? 
you know, it's uh, uh, quite a lot happening, quite a lot to take in. And yeah, so th and there is um, still quite a bit to find out still, right? We still have to wait and see because we still have two episodes left. But um, I think that's like the major stuff that I wanted to get out of the way anyway with uh, Butcher and uh, with uh, Sage. Otherwise, um, when it comes to the other stuff, it's a little more trivial, but um, unfortunately, Tech Knight is dead, um, I guess, for right now. Maybe they're just using it as a cover-up or something, but I wouldn't see why, because uh, they already told Tollminder he's dead. Uh, maybe maybe some, some sometime in the future, somebody will use Tech Knight's suit. You know, uh, maybe it could be Sister Sage. It could be even Ashley, for all we know. Ashley could steal the suit cause she, since she was an old friend, right? She was in the changing room or whatever, so maybe somewhere she knows where the suit is, right? The high-tech suit. And maybe she will be the one to pilot it when she's fighting somebody. And my theory is that um, she will, her, her like final opponent or whatever... Maybe um, and it could be for season either for season four or season five. I think her final opponent will be Huey, right? Uh, and Huey will somehow outsmart her or whatever with something that he knows that she doesn't or something. I don't know because uh, they're both humans, right? So they ha they'll have to like outsmart each other somehow or outwise each other, right? With street street smarts, maybe. Um, but not before Ashley probably fucks up Huey quite a bit. But um, <laughs> um, but it's just it's just a theory. Like I'm obviously I don't know anything. Like there's no leaks or anything like that. I don't think. So uh, um, but I think the tech. Hopefully, I'm just I'm just coping or whatever or hopium, that the tech suit will see in the show because it is very disappointing that we don't get really get to see it. We didn't get, we didn't see it in Gen V. We certainly have not seen it uh, here in this episode. Not even like a case, like a case, for, like it's not even like in the display case or whatever of sorts. Um, so that's very unfortunate if that is the case. If it, they don't even use it at all, it's like, ah, oh, man, that's kind of disappointing. I, I wanted to see the Tech Knight suit personally, but you know. Um, for right now, though, we're not we're not seeing it. We're not we're not seeing Tech Knight in the Tech Knight suit, so that's pretty disappointing. Because otherwise, yeah, maybe they did write him more of like a Batman um, parody than anything, and so maybe the Tech Tech Knight suit doesn't exist at all. You know, that's uh, another possibility. I'm afraid. But um, uh. What was it? Um, so yeah, I think maybe if if the tech suit does exist, then I think the Ashley versus Huey th theory is still up in the air for me. It's still it's still on the table for me. As in as for uh, season five or whatever, the, sp the final season. Uh, and then we, we uh, what was it? What was the other thing? Um, uh. Oh yeah, so Tech Knight is dead, yes. Um, oh yeah, the other one with, is what's going on with Firecracker and Homelander, right? So so from the beginning, of course, Firecracker was a big fan of Homelander. She admired him, she looked up to him and stuff like that. But of course, you know, she like plays her way through to get Homelander, right? She wanted this opportunity to get to, get to Homelander um, especially by the time she kind of like got to know like sort of the system, right? Or at least enough about the system. And maybe she now has her own agenda, right? Uh, but for right now, like, uh, she, like, uh, she apparently knew about Homelander's obsession with, um, like milk. Especially with breast milk, because, um, you know, Homelander never had a real mom, so he's got parental issues, right? Not just daddy issues, but mommy issues so he never had real parents so that's why he has those issues and um he turned out very very horrible and firecracker knew at least enough of that so that she, that's why she took like medication of sorts all kinds of medication that slightly enlarged her heart in, in her in her quotes but it gives her um i guess the ability <laughs> i know that's 
weird way to put it, but she she's able to produce breast milk and um, to the point where she actually lactates and uh, squirts it onto Homelander, and that's like one of the very uncomfortable scenes, right? But obviously, it's like you 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 you're, you've grown to know that with Homelander, so yeah, it's like the next step, man. Like oh man, what, like what the hell, you know? And then Homelander's face when he got hit by it's like. <laughs> it's so funny it was so funny but at the same time very kind of dark and uncomfortable right um so yeah so um he he of course he wasn't uh he's not he's not attracted to a firecracker at all but now that she did that it's like now he has a new mommy to go to essentially and i think she knows that she is she definitely has uh, Homelander in, ho in her hands essentially now and now Homelander can like uh, or or, or Firecracker can like get by a lot easier now that Homelander is on her on her side for sure so whenever like you know um, Sage kind of like argues with uh, Firecracker Homelander will come in in between and be like hey Sister Sage back off you know kind of thing possibly but now he's like a baby. He's like a baby in uh, Firecracker's arms. She has him right, and she she he is playing right into her cards, right? Um, playing is playing right into her hands, right? I I forgot the exact expression to it, but yeah. Anyway, so she has him now in her strings, essentially, potentially. We'll have to see about the two episodes. But yeah, she um. The other, but although that could backfire on her, because how how um, uh, how Homelander treated uh, the previous lady, like the previous CEO, right? She was, I think, it was like Mallory or something. I forget her name. It's been a long time. It's like back in season one or whatever. Um, he, cause he, cause he will probably come back to his to himself, right? saying once again like you know repeating the cycle like you know um oh i don't need you anymore so laser he's gonna, he's gonna probably like laser firecracker's eyes out or something or something like that you know and then um uh that could be how that could be one possibility of how firecracker meets her end the other the other possibility is, of course you know she finally fights fi uh starlight one-on-one -on -one. And then she loses, right? That's one. Yes, that's the other. But I think um, the other possibility, of course, is that because of her heart being slightly enlarged, she'll probably have some sort of heart attack, cardiac arrest, or something with her heart will happen. Maybe it will explode or something when Starlight tries to like do another thing of uh, sedative or something. What was it? The anesthesiac or whatever the hell um, she'll inject into her again or something. I don't know. And then they'll like unintentionally kill her, you know, in turn. Um, some something with the heart, right? Something heart related will probably be the end of her, possibly. Because why would why would you know otherwise why would they bring that up in the first place? That has to be a that has to come into play somewhere. And maybe you know, and maybe maybe that could be caused by Sage because she's smart. She pro probably pick up on it somehow. And use that to her advantage, right? Whenever Firecracker wants to, you know, stab her in the back or something, you know, because Firecracker has a reason to stab her in the back, because she keeps like disrespecting her, treating her like a child. She set her up to be um, getting her ass beat by um, Starlight, all that stuff. She she hates her. She does not like her, you know. So she will turn her back on Sage anytime, if given the opportunity and the necessity, right? Uh, so, um, that is another, like, thing to think about, right, for theory crafting. Um, what could happen with, um, M.M., right? M.M. had the panic attack right after he shot her Sage in the head. Um, you know, who knows, right? Is he, will he still keep going? Will he let, um, Butcher take over? That I'm not sure. Will he will he just fight, fight and keep on fighting? I don't know, because he's been having like 
real stress, OCD and all that stuff. Which is kind of funny because it does play into like his real life because uh, I think apparently his um, he lost a bit of weight, which he kind of knows with his face. Um, because I guess like for him maintaining that amount of weight is stressful. So that's why he was um, apparently right. This is or allegedly he uh, was recommended to lose some weight to reduce that stress. So maybe they play that kind of around or maybe it's just by coincidence you know um they even like hinted at in like the first episode like kimiko brought food from the party or whatever the ball or whatever you want to call it um it was like gruyere or something some sort of cheese gruyere some 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 like snack uh she brought that to mm because kimiko wanted mm to eat because it looks you know mm um seems like he's not eating much as or as much and Frenchie was like come on you gotta eat you know you're working too you're working too hard so maybe they like were able to play around that a little bit you know or it, it probably was just a coincidence but that does like work right to the show's favor right in a way to enhance like the drama on MM's side but yeah so who knows about that one with M.M.? I, I mean, I, I think he's still going to keep going, right, somehow. He'll probably, like, take a break, and then he'll come back again. Um, when it comes to Frenchie, though, what's going on with him? I think he got taken by Vought because somebody knew he's in jail, and that's why putting himself in jail was a really stupid move because, you know, he's a, he has a big target on his back by Vought and of course Vought has a lot of connections right so like uh, as soon as they knew from the police they took him and they put him in the Vought prison and maybe I'm just putting it out there I'm just making I'm just having fun with this maybe Frenchie meets up with the uh the Gen V kids I don't know that I don't know um Gen V uh will probably play be played around more uh, besides those weird random appearances like I'm a little disappointed that they don't the the, the at least with um what's her face Kate and Jonathan I think his name was um don't really play a part too much but maybe they're saving it for um season five or whatever we'll see uh, so I think Frenchie um, is taken to a bot prison of sorts. Or maybe, yeah, and then Tech Knight's um, prison thing. That's why Tech Knight was there in the first place. Because they wanted to um, use his uh, jail system or prison system. Excuse me. Prison system to essentially um, have internment, right, for uh, humans. Starting with Frenchie. Maybe. <laughs> Um, so that's what's going on, likely, maybe. That's a uh, theory. Because otherwise, yeah, that's probably... And then, uh, you know, of course, uh, Kimiko tried to visit him, but uh, the officer was like, yo, he, he's not taking... He, he, he has refused visitors or whatever as a cover-up. So that's po probably a big possibility. Uh, so that that could be an interesting turn for Frenchie. I don't know. Like, he's just like, fuck this, I need to get out, blah, 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 like, whatever, you know, I need to stop fucking, uh, letting the past define me or whatever, even though that was what Kimiko said and Frenchie heard her say that, you know, it's, yeah, uh, I, I just hope they put that end on the side story for Frenchie, it's just strange, I, I, I think they need to stop it. Colin, I don't know what's going to happen to him. Um, did he just... Is he gone forever? Is he going to reappear again in the final episode? I don't know. Is Frenchie, Frenchie going to die? I don't know. Um, is he going to get stabbed or shot by Colin? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, we'll have to find out there. Um, I guess. I, I, I think Colin will, will walk out or he either will die or not be in season 5 because he's just no longer in the story. 
he's just out of the situation or whatever, away from Frenchie and everything. Who, who knows? So, man. Um, so yeah, I already talked about Butcher, right? I mean, big tentacle thing. I think it's what's happening. Um. Otherwise, um, Starlight, she has, she still like has no powers right now. She's just stressed out. She has to like sure her her head is still like not in uh in the right line uh uh not like realigned. She has to set her head straight because of the whole thing with Firecracker and everything. I think. Um. What else? Is there anything else at all? Um, I think the virus is a no-go for the most part because of they like they've already explained it. Like they have to make the virus stronger um, to kill Homelander because Homelander is just so it's just so powerful in comparison to other, all the other soups. And um, his, so his yeah his immunity is crazy as well as himself. <laughs> To the point where the virus has to be airborne, right? And obviously, um, that's going to kill Ryan. That's going to kill Starlight, Kimiko, like, all those people, you know? Including, especially Ryan, being young and everything. Although, there could be a counter theory to that that I have, right? And, um, I want to say that Ryan... Could be the could be immune to it, potentially, because he he's technically immune. He was not injected with uh, uh, compound V. He was born from Homelander and Becca, so he got his powers quote unquote naturally, right? Right. So he's more of a mutant than he is a soup. If that makes sense, so maybe he technically doesn't have compound v but like just like the effects of compound v uh in his genes now and now he he can like essentially carry on the super genes to make more children uh, make more mutants right if he wants more children or if he if he uh makes or has children excuse me later on in his life um so he could be the the one sole survivor you know, but then you know, um, uh, there's that thing whole whole thing going on going on with Becca, what, with what Becca said, like if he if he, he, like even if he is successful at killing Homelander, there is that possibility of making another Homelander because Ryan's gonna get mad because Homelander is his real dad, so like obviously he doesn't want him to be killed, right? But how do you kill or how do you stop how do you stop Homelander how do you stop him right breast milk I mean I don't know man like <laughs> um and obviously having a mummy figure is not gonna not gonna really stop him it's just he's still gonna be around so there it, there is that sense of intensity intent there's that uh, sense of uh, intensity because it's like how, how do you stop Homelander yeah if you kill you can, you can kill him but if you do Ryan's gonna become the next Homelander he's gonna get mad he's gonna get like enraged like why did you kill my, my real dad blah, blah blah you know but fuck you butcher or whatever you know all that stuff and then now you, you, now you're back to square one essentially even worse because it's like um, Becca was promised by Butcher to take care of Ryan, but he can't because Ryan is now Homelander, essentially Homelander two or Homelander the second, and it's just yeah, you know. So the only way to stop Homelander though is to ha to just convince Ryan that Homelander has to be stopped. He has to let Homelander go, and he be the one to kill Homelander. But who is to say, right, if that also is not going to create another Homelander? No. So, 
Uh, I'm gonna put it right there. I'm gonna stop it right there. I know there's a lot to talk about, or for me anyway. If you have any theories uh, about um, the boys, where you think this is gonna go with episode um, seven and eight, and of course season five, you know, I'm sure I'm sure I'm like missing characters, right? With like Kimiko and stuff like that, but yeah, I just want to get the more important ones out of the way. Um, oh yeah, and an A train, right? What's gonna happen with A train? Oh my goodness, right? I I I I think unfortunately he's gonna go right. He's he's he just started becoming an actual hero. That kid smiled. He saved MM, you know, and that was like his first time being so genuine that then he's gonna then is gonna like okay boom right. I think he's gonna go, but yeah, he's gonna be that heroic sacrifice. And then his, uh, obviously his brother is gonna like miss him. Like he's like, fuck, you know, blah, 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 but can't be helped. Now, if he becomes an official boys member, then hey, great, right? That's awesome. But I, th I think personally, heroic sacrifice. Uh, uh, at least that's of some kind. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put, but now I'm gonna put a, put a stop to it. Um, any theories or comments relating to the video, leave it down below. I'd love to read them. Um, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, really, really helps out, and I do appreciate it. So this has been my, th uh, review slash theory crafting, theory ranting, uh, rambling about, um, uh, episode six, and I guess beyond. Thank you very much. Hope to see you all in next one hope maybe i'll i'll do one for episode seven depending on if there's more significant stuff and of course by episode eight that'll be the full like whole review so hope to see you all in the next one sean out